Very similar bands coming out from Newbie, Death Prophet, and Alchemist, but we see Invictus Gaming banning the Night Stalker right away. Lycan's in the pool this game. He was taken out last game. Instead of the Alchemist, right? Yeah. IG also has first pick again, so that gives, that's going to give Newbie last pick as well. Sand King and is in the pool, sticking and to their guns, same exact traps as last game, minus the bands. Yeah, right. at, at least now when uh, IG is picking Lich, they're banning the NS, which is one of the best roamers, so they're adapting a bit. I mean, I guess they feel probably that, you know, they feel like the Lich was not the problem the last game, it was something else, and if we just do the same thing again, but we do it a bit better, maybe remove, yeah, like you said, that Night Stalker, then we can just go through with it. Taking a little bit more time here on the second pick. Kind of surprises me a bit. I mean, a lot of teams tend to pick their first two in uh, almost unison. Well, the Night Stalker made a lot of sense. It's It's been a pick that people have turned to, especially against the Lich, time and time again throughout this tournament. So probably trying to theorycraft or think about what kind of a replacement here they can have for Night Stalker in the laning phase. And their answer is going to be Sand King. Yeah, Great. You know, a little bit weaker of a roamer, but definitely gets a similar job done. That means that after this game, he still has 50% games played of Sand King. <laughs> Kaka. That's right. Yeah, Every especially. other game. They, yeah. Hmm. It's a Kaka special. It's a Kaka special. Also very reliable hero. And this is also like, this is very open once again with the puck. Like we said, it's, he can go, we've seen it on, he can go off lane, he can go mid. Yeah. So they're just keeping it open and yeah, they're just going to kind of wait, wait out. And even some of the games even had in safe and I think in the went uh, aggro try. So it's very open for sure. Another thing is that we do see once again, it, it is the Lich first pick. So we are going to see Newbie on that last pick once again. And we'll see if they can make use of that last pick, same way they did in the previous game. I'm curious if it's IG or Newbie who's like choosing mm -hmm. uh, the second pick or first pick. I would imagine that Newbie is taking second pick. I think maybe IG shows first pick the first game then, and then Newbie is sticking to the second pick this game. Yeah, I think that's most Would likely the scenario, but it could be a bunch of different things. Yeah, because Newbie probably feel like that Lich first pick that they're getting, they don't like, they don't feel like it's worth it for IG. So they're fine giving away the first pick, and they like their last pick. So yeah. in a game like this, though, with these four bands, I imagine they probably would have just picked Puck first pick, anyways, and been like, okay, just have your Lich. Yeah. <laughs> With the Earth Spirit, Invictus Gaming has a lot of early game threats in terms of Earth Spirit's great ability to roam around and gank. Yep, a nice, a nice silence for Puck. Puck most likely going to build into a Yule Scepter this game to remove that silence if he ever gets into trouble. I mean, that's something that's been so impressive to watch with pros that the difference between something with a 0.5 second windup versus something that's instant is, it's almost as though you can't even cast the spell versus a lot of pros that can just easily dodge away. I mean, even in the back, the fact that Phantom Lancer had the opportunity to dodge yeah. the sniper ultimate. Everyone back there was, oh, what an error. Definitely true, and puck players are some of the, the most mechanically skilled players out there. However, every once in a while, you got to keep them in check. You know, you got to throw, you got to throw a stun that isn't supposed to land and uh, make sure that they're staying honest. Right. The, the like, uh, mind games that goes on uh, during these games are insane. Like. You know that your opponent knows what you're going to do, so you don't do it, but then, then then they know that. So it's a, a lot of time when like a lot of these things, like, things happens without you knowing it when you're watching the games. Surely Boboka's not going to go for the courier again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, we killed him the last three times he tried that. Oh no, he's there again. And then you start being worried. You know, maybe he is there looking for the courier. <laughs> yeah, but that's kind of how it works. When you have players like, for example, like Boboka, and I also know like maybe next time, some of these players who really like sniping curs, it becomes something you, as the enemy team, have to think about. You know, and it, this is something that takes up your time in the beginning of the game. You have to be very aware of that cur. Maybe you even have to invest a hero to go to that mid lane. During and a long time, there was ferry, Yeah, and ferry things out. And with that, that means that the enemy team, they have you know, there's free space. There's one hero who has to send this item, so there's a lot going on there. And there was actually one point of a time where that was actually very common, that the support is going to bring your clarity from the tier three tower to your yep. mid hero, <laughs> like every game. Hand deliver. The private courier life of support. <laughs> it is demoralizing to lose your courier <laughs> at the beginning of a game, especially in a major series. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah, pressure's on. You've got a million other things to worry about. All of a sudden, oh my god, the courier! Yeah, it's that, a that very easily, like, e uh, easy way to get an 
advantage early on. Like it's, it just can be huge if your like mid hero doesn't get his flask or the bottle even or boots or like early on. We see Legion Commander banned out by newbie. Legion Commander was one of the big high impact heroes on Invictus Gaming's lineup in the previous game. Lifestealer making an appearance in the bands here for IG. Worried about that puck, Lifestealer and Fest Bomb. Yeah, and probably also because they have these two heroes that have a lot of magical damage. They yeah. don't want the Lifestealer to just be able to negate that. Yep, some of the cores are Juggernaut and Nix are two cores that people like playing up against Earth Spirit because they can self remove um, Earth Spirit's <laughs> ultimate and avoid a ton of damage. They actually go draw. I was thinking about it, but then they already have Lich on Evictus Gaming, and Lich is one of the best heroes against draw because draw is physical, and the lineup is going to revolve around the physical damage, and then Lich with his Ice Arm is just perfect against it. Drow will auto-attack something. All of a sudden, she's slow. They can close the gap there. I'm surprised that they picked it so early in the third pick instead of the fourth. They, I mean, yeah, they even have last pick this game, so... Because do you think that they were possibly scared of IG picking draw? I don't think so. Drow's, Doesn't really I mean, look like it, right? Drow can be nice against Puck, but That's true. there's, I mean, I don't think there was any hard tells. Maybe they want to use the fourth pick for something else. Like, they want to keep it open in a way so they can counter their th uh, Could we see a Lycan, do you think, now against this Drow? Could. It's, you can know, they you talk to me a little bit more about the Drow plan? Because typically, Drow lineups are a lot of ranged heroes, and you pick the Drow close to the end to kind of secure a strong advantage because Drow gives bonus range damage to everyone on the team. But with this early of a pick, you're talking about leaving it open. I mean, is in other words, is that maybe Newbie will abandon a Drow-focused play? And no, they won't probably. It's like more that they can choose which of the uh, ranged heroes that they want to have. You can pick Medusa, yeah. you can pick uh, Sniper again, you can have... Uh, a lot of these heroes that uh, works in a different situation each. We definitely expect two more ranged heroes from Newbie. From the either pu most likely, eh, Puck could go mid, but they could pick something else. They still could go for that Ferion, which has not been picked. But what IG wants to do up against Drow is gap close. They want to get on top of the Drow and either kill her or you know just reduce the amount of damage she's giving all of her teammates. And IG or Newbie, you know, wants to protect her, keep her alive as long as possible in fights, and let her have. You know, let her auto attack as many times as she can. It's a little bit similar to how the sniper works, with the exception being, I think, when you have a draw ranger, you just make your lanes so much stronger that the game plan is a little bit different. The sniper, he's kind of that guy, you really have to protect him, whereas with the draw ranger, the draw ranger can kind of stay away for a bit and just let his own team do his thing just because he provides the aura. Draw Visage. This is an old strategy that uh, used to be run a lot before uh, because when the draw ranger pops her Precision Aura, uh, it actually works on creeps that are on the map and also Visage Familiars. Yeah, this, this helps Visage be enabled into becoming a much stronger hero. Drow, isn't, you know, Drow is a one position carry, however, she's kind of a team carry. You know, she boosts up the damage of everybody, not just herself. It really can't be understated how impactful the Drow Ranger aura is in early game. If you're doing any gank with any Throughout the entire right. game, even. Yeah. You know, it's just more and more bonus damage. You know, myself playing a position five support, I love having a draw on my team because when I go to the jungle and I try and farm or I see us in lane, I've got plus 50 damage and you know, I get every last hit. Can't miss I can kill the I can kill the jungle creeps in a reasonable <laughs> amount of time. And all of a sudden, I've got a lot of gold. So we see something that's this is pretty common up against draw lineups that you get this Dark Seer with a couple of melee heroes and you just want to run at the draw ranger with your shells. Because the draw ranger has to run away from you, you know she knows she can't just stay and fight because she will die to the shells. And he's also very good against her on the lane, to just push in the lane and try to pressure them as much as possible. Visage doesn't, you know, Visage, Visage does next to nothing up against Darkseer in lane. So that's, you know, that's, that's one way to deal with the draw. You challenge the early game laning phase. Darkseer and Earth Spirit also offer a lot of team fight, which can help you defend your high ground, which is another strategy that people use to. Draw Ranger. Sometimes, if you can just turtle on your high ground and delay long enough for you know you to get some items that will help you gap close, you can defeat the Draw Ranger in the mid to late game. Sometimes you play a 125 minute game and then you lose to a Draw Ranger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know Drow. I don't know. It's an interesting arrow. It's all about positioning. Invictus Gaming right now has Bloodseeker, Earth Spirit, and Darkseer, three heroes that are really great at closing distances between squishy ranged heroes, but they appear to be lacking someone to push towers well they do and they also sort of i mean 
Similar to last game, they didn't have the easiest uh, stun setups. Now they really like yours to hit towers. Yeah, they do. Wow. It's I mean, but they are going to be able to bomb in hard on newbie throughout this they're game. Just gonna, yeah, they're just going to have to try to kill maybe two or three heroes from newbie and then just go melee and hit the tower. But if uh, newbie plays it correct, then they're going to be able to delay the fight and uh, delay the push. I'm worried about this uh, Ember a little bit in the mid lane. There's a chance that he gets very bullied by this uh, Drawara. I'm guessing it's Puck and Maybe gonna, Sanging helping him out. I think Lich might help Lich, him. Right? Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. Lich yeah. is going to help out the mid that lane this sense. game. Let Earth Spirit and Dark Seer go somewhere together and uh, yeah. have Bloodseeker solo his lane. Outworld Devourer is going to be the final pick for Newbie. Super Invictus sh Gaming has a lot of melee on their team. A lot of heroes that can bomb in and try to pick off enemies. But not particularly strong tower pushing. So will Newbie be able to delay the game long enough? to make their Drow Aura get maximum value? Or will IG be able to close it out soon? It's time for game two of IG vs. Newbie. Thank you very much, Day9 and Indy. We've just seen the two lineups, Fog. Very, very clear-cut styles from both sides. As the yeah. panel have mentioned, we have this, this Drow Strap, but IG, they've got all the answers in terms of heroes required to get in the face of a Drow Strap. They, they've yeah. got this incredibly potential uh, potent Dark Sea Earth Spirit combo, which we've seen from them and many teams in the past. That can be terrifying if the performance and execution is there. I look at IG's lineup and I see brawling. These guys want to kill heroes. That's about it. D multiple heroes that can use the Ion Shell to get on top of the Drow Ranger and do massive amounts of magic damage. But as for hitting buildings, like the panel mentioned, there is next to nothing. True. Well, um, Newbie's approach is they have good amount of team fights, very strong lanes with that last pick OD versus the Ember Spirit, and ways to force objectives. Yeah, and this, I mean, the last big OD we saw what Newbie do it the other day, didn't we, with SCCC, and yeah. it was absolutely phenomenal. They were confident with it then. You can see sort of from their faces in the booth, they they seemed like they looked pretty happy with the fact that they finished off this draft with an OD. Yeah. And it really is, as, as the panel was saying, and as you sort of mentioned, if they, can, if they can win the lanes, if they can start to push before these sort of crucial items, maybe these blink daggers and such, and maybe a, an item of survivability for the Ember Spirit comes online, this game could it could potentially become a bit of a steamroll in favor of Newbie. Yeah, this game could become quite a blunder. Also, Newbie has incredibly high team fight, and they're on two of their most comfortable, yeah. two of their most comfortable players on the two most comfortable heroes that they've played throughout the majority of this tournament. Kaka on the Sanking, like the panel said, 50% play rate here at this tournament, and KP on the puck, like been playing it majority of the times. And on top of that, it's with a Drow aura. Yeah, definitely for, in my opinion, on this side of IG, a lot of eyes onto this combo. XXS Darkseer and, of course, the one and only Baboka Earth Spirit. If these two can pull off the plays, set things up for the side, it could certainly put a full stop to Newbie's it's, plan this game. It's a lot of pressure on Baboka yeah. and XXS in this game, in my opinion, for their Definitely. fights. They have to land super crucial vacuum combos with the Baboka stuns because he's their only real disabled. They have chains and Baboka stuns. That's it. So it's really up to Baboka and the Darkseer to make big things happen in those fights. Newbie I'm in a very aggressive position, looking for a very early first blood. Baboka walking up. Yeah, they're going to edit by the looks of it. Indeed, Baboka spotted out straight away as they're there prepared on the high ground, and he's gone. First blood. And Who gets it too? KP. Oh, KP gets it too. This is. I was going to point this out before too. Yep. So if they put the Lich Ember mid and they have Darkseer Earth Spirit top, this is a puck with Drow Aura versus a Bloodseeker. This is not easy for the Bloodseeker. Even though you can get your sustain, if there's harassment in the other lanes as well, your thirst can build up. But the fact that it's a Puck with Drowara and now with First Blood on top, so he's going to have boots to be able to always keep his distance, it's going to be very tough for him. I mean, that's the thing as well. We saw how well KP played his lane last game, and that was when he didn't have the Drowara. Yep. So as you say, with that thrown in, that bottom lane, IG have got to be very careful on uh, how well they can control it. As, in terms of their supports, as the panel mentioned, we can probably what expect to see Q hover around what the mid lane for the most part of the laning stage, do you feel, to yep. help out? Definitely. Needs, needs to help the Ember Spirit versus OD. That is already an OD favorite matchup. Throw a Drow or a match on top. Throw S Triple C, one of the most best OD players, too. That's extremely tough. And Kaka's actually going to start at bottom, too. So Bloodseeker is going to be very susceptible to getting pressured and not really getting any last hits in these waves because he also did not get his bounty. Win. So he does not have that poor man shield start for those right clicks. Right away, they start the zone. Yeah, we'll see how well Burning can do under the pressure on this bottom lane. He certainly did deal with the pressure very well last time. But uh, as we saw, for the most part, that was just KP alone. 
And at least on the PL, he had a, a sort of escape mechanism. And this Bloodseeker, if he doesn't get those last hits, if he doesn't get that regen, it's going to be incredibly hard for him to sustain in this lane. Yeah, and they don't have their pull open either, so Baboka can't pull the lane back. They do have the side, the side camp in, but KP actually has the advantage. Or, sorry, Nubi has the advantage being able to pull that Centaur camp now, taking that, and it's going to deny a good chunk of farm there. And if we look at the top lane too, Nubi does have their pull open. Faith right away stacks the pull, starts pulling it back into, into their favor. Oh, so it's going to be Karkar actually getting the kill onto Yo. Baboka there. The two of them chasing down the Earth Spirit. That's the second kill on the board here for Nubi. And this is not how the IG can, can afford to have this bottom lane go. We talked about already the struggles of burning. If he has Baboka, you know, essentially giving that, that bonus to the enemy dual lane, it's going to only get harder and harder. Mid lane, I mean, seeing both Q and OP essentially being bullied back by this, this SCCC OD. I think he got two mana procs from his Essence Aura there, so a little bit lucky by SCCC. But yeah, skilling the Arcane Orb to harass back rather than going for Astral for the last hits. Because he doesn't need to use the Astral for last hit since he has the Drow Aura so much. This at least puts pressure and threatens them from trying to dive him. Uh, Baboka just with the level 1 at the moment. I mean, very hard for him to make any sort of action happen. Bottom lane, burning, again being looked to. He is on his own. Kaka leading him with the Burrow Strike again. It's a KP skill back. build too. They really just want to go killing for The Orb doesn't connect though. If it did, that would have certainly been a dead. Bloodseeker, but at the least it's forcing him back. Mid lane Q does have the invis looking to set up onto S Triple C. Rolling forward, they've got the change, they do have the control. They'll get the kill. Big, big pick off there for IG, making something happen there in this mid lane. Not having the defensive Astral to put himself under, of course, with the build that he went for. So good rotation by Baboka. Yeah, KP unfortunately missing that or bottom is pretty costly. You have to use it, spend a lot of mana to try to go for burning. And this time he doesn't have the CM aura. But we'll see him rush Soul Ring. That's, that's the thing now. In this mid lane, IG definitely doing a good job of securing it for OP. Yeah. It's involved in that kill. Now with a severe lead in terms of CS in this first three minutes, double that of S Triple C. To be expected. You know, yes, they're they're the they're presence. putting the fire, the focus onto burning. If you look at him, he's only seven last hits. Still getting experience, but Kaka trying to find an opportunity, but burning very well aware of that. Yeah, certainly this is the decision from IG, make sure that OP has a, a good start and just accept that burning is going to have to be sacked in this, this early laning stage. They're doubling up the wave a bit in the mid lane. They saw Baboka making the rotation in though, and they do have the reaction coming in from Faith. With Faith here, Nili has that level 3 as well. Definite potential to turn any sort of play round that IG may look for. Now they might just match a duel in and they just leave the Drow Ranger top and that's what Baboka, like the panel was mentioning. Punish those weak lanes. That's what he has to be doing now that he's spirit. And as soon as the Vistage does leave, they can try to go for these dives because he can close the distance on the trout. Now he's got the level two. If he can get in there with the slow and the stun. There's no gust either. This is a definitely uh, the potential for setup. He just needs to find the connection and provoke a straight in. And of course he hits it. Gets the slow off. Playing around with him, making sure to get maximum use at the time to just hover around the drow, get that iron shell damage in, and IG with a good read of the map, as you say, and making great use of it. Yeah, perfect move. Spotting the rotation again now with that aggressive ward placed by Baboka during the rotation. So he sees Faith moving back top, and we'll see him probably put his pressure else elsewhere. Maybe take an ion shell on TB somewhere, or just go claim bounty runes. Burning, getting no last hits. Yeah. This is just, it's accepted now at this point. He knows it. it. Certainly should be a little bit of a worry as well for IG. We saw how much KP could achieve last game with, with the start that he had. And yeah. he is definitely on track to have a similar one this game. Picks up the treads, five minutes in, second highest on CS. Mid lane. Back up with the wraparound, straight in onto the Lich. Hope he's there with two man chains to hold them back. Q. One more hit. Himself away. No, he can't. Indeed. There's Triple C moves in, gets the kill. The same time, though, bottom lane, Baboka moved in, had the control, and a kill that Burning is going to be over the moon with finally being able to bring down KP and get a bit more space for this Bloodseeker. Yeah, get, get, getting the Ion Shaw on himself to have that extra damage, they wouldn't have been able to clean up KP otherwise. And you saw him skill the Geomantic Grip at level 3 on the Earth Spirit for that silence. It's the only way they can really go for those setups on the puck. This silence can put a big factor in this game versus the puck and both the OD. OD does not like to build BKB too early on. This could be one of the games we do see it since there's a heavy amount of magical from IG though. But more than likely just the standard Hurricane Pike build. First. Yeah, and middle lane. CS wise for S Triple C. 25 against the 37. So, OP still with this definite lead. 
Yeah, still doing super well though. Level five, he's got a clear cut level advantage there, and the fact that he's still farming versus that type of dual lane is impressive. Baboka takes the haste turn, makes the way bottom. Bloodseeker's almost six. They have the blood right too, so if they get the connections, they could uh, maybe time. go for KP, but still hard kill. Look at this for newbie. Smoke up. Kaka with the tranquils. Can certainly look to try and close the gap. Before Ember hits six, they do still have kill threshold, but it's not in the greatest spot right now. And it is a tricky one with that flame guard and such. Not the easiest of kills for newbie to try and go for, and at the same time, look where Baboka is. He's there, ready behind them. Level four on this Earth Spirit. Well, they're gonna they make the, they're the ones to the go indeed. They look straight towards S Triple C. Silence after the root with the boulder smash as well on target. That's S Triple C got. Kaka comes in with a two-man burrow strike, but it doesn't look like they actually have the damage to bring down the members of IG. They throw out the soul search over the flame guard up on IP. He's fine. And Baboka grabs himself the double kill. Baboka again. In the right position at the right time. Beautifully positioned there on the high ground. Four kills so far in this Earth Spirit. We've seen him do it in the past. And here in this game too, where IG need to step it up. He's certainly having the impact that his team require in these lanes. Those are the kind of rotations. It's like the split second decision. The newbie decides like, okay, we're going to start making our way back to our top. And as soon as that happened, Provoke of course doesn't see that. But it's like a little bit of that luck scenario. They both make the move at it's very similar times. But newbie was starting to press their way elsewhere. They do get the kill. Zang complete as well on this Earth Spirit. The Boca coming it very early on. Level four. Successful rotations all around. Four, two, and one. All five kills. Now Kaka's playing just directly behind us. Triple C. I mean, this mid lane is very scary. Look, Matt. And Matt's TP is coming out. Reaction, in fact, from both of the other cores. KP coming in as well with the Dragon. The for us, though. But both are falling low. Moving forward, OP trying to go for a triple C, but they're out of mana. Ghost comes out from Mugi. On to two, and this time, Newbie. They take two, they take three. They literally bring everyone. And it pays off absolutely massively there. KP and Mugi making sure that they can turn around what, for the most part, has been absolute chaos in this mid lane. IG throwing everything down it. And yeah. you'll be finally shutting it down, okay. stemming the bleeding, and getting S Triple C back and involved in some great action. You don't see your Drow Ranger TP that often, but when they know that this triple aggression is coming out from IG, it's it's worth it. Picking up huge kills there. And now continuing their movement, trying to put pressure onto Burning with Kaka's rotation. Do have the rupture, they do have a Boka. Kaka, he's gonna be gone upon straight away. We'll go. Try and hide in the sandstorm, but of course with the silence from the geomagnetic grip and the the blood ride, no escape for Kaka. Let's get the stun up before he dies. Burning looks like he's gonna he's drop go in. in fact, look who's here. It's Mugi on the draw. He's come all the way down to this point. They try kick Burning away. It's not gonna be enough as Burning and Baboka do go down as well. S Triple C, Mugi, KP. I mean, these guys now, they've had enough of this early aggression from IG. They're from the mid lane to the bottom lane. The same time, up on the top, Faith was on his own trying to pick up some solo XP. OP and XXS will punish it. But this is Newbie getting incredibly active with all three of their cores very early on because yep. of the way that IG's playing. They're adapting to it brilliantly. Yeah, exact a adaptation is the word I was going to use. They went to mid, get that great move. They have the shrine up, they shrine, clear an ancient, and then go bottom and try to pressure burning, and they get it successfully. Burning will be here to, to keep them off. This bottom lane does have to be careful. I mean, KP's got the Dream Coil back up. He's level eight on this drought. Mugi certainly packing a punch. OP and XXS on the hunt. Okaka up top. Kaka's got the vision there with the ward though. Knows their exact position. Bottom lane, Baboka coming in again. They have Rupture back up on Burning. They're gonna look to try and make a play immediately there with the silence, keeping this punk in control underneath the cover of the blood right. And that, again, an easy pick up for IG. No reaction this time from Newbie. They can't react like they have been every time. Baboka. Baboka Earth Spirit, man. Really? So, I mean, we said at the start, this is the guy that you've got to look to to sort of secure these lanes early on. Yeah. Sure, he's, he's died a few times, but he absolutely has made a huge impact, setting up kills for both Burning and, of course, getting the action on for OP in that mid lane as well. Next couple of moments, we'll probably see IG playing more around the Darkseer. Not just, not around him exactly, but like with the benefiting of the Ion Shell because they have the level six on the Ember Spirit and they can always use that to enable him harder. Blade Mill is going to be the choice for OP. I mean, I guess it makes sense if they want to just run in at, the, in at them and, and stop Newbie reacting as they are. An yep. early Blade Mail is, is going to do wonders on, on the Ember Spirit. Yeah, it's super good. It gives you everything you really want versus a Drow and an OD lineup. It gives you Int versus the OD, and it gives you Armor versus the Drow Ranger, and of oh. course the reflecting damage. Oh, so Kaka coming forward with the silence there, straight away from Baboka, rolling forward, but Kaka already off to the side. Baboka won't be able to fully control the Sand King. 
Raka gets himself away. Ogis looking to make another rotation come out. Dragonlance finished up. KP positioned on the I mean, side for the dream point. A dream coil point. and a move forward from Mugi could certainly do it. They Boboka have... knows though. Boboka's already making the move he down needs bottom. He to get down it quick and he will indeed. There's the boulder smash onto two and the silence into the blood right holds them back. Burning can now move in, close the gap onto Mugi. Mugi tries to get them away, but Mugi's gone. Boboka! He's everywhere. He's reading all of the movements. He really now. is. Top lane to bottom lane, Baboka is really out. He's putting the work in here in this game too. Involved in eight of the nine kills that IG have done so far. Like we said, he's the one, he, him and the Darkseer have the big heavy, on their, uh, heavy weight on their backs to let the early game go, work well for IG. This is now level six, or Faith, or level seven actually. So Faith has found a decent amount of farming levels across the map during all these rotations. And Mugi been moving around quite a bit now. With the Dragon Lance, Treads, now looking towards having that Shadow Blade done. That may, Bane. that kind of move their bottom might deter Newbie from making too many aggressive plays without more numbers. Like two, num two heroes, now they're gonna probably not do it with just two, they're probably gonna bring three or four even to try to go for those kills. KP very close to having that uh, Bling Dagger done. And they need everything that they can get to try and get the jump onto Baboka or by all means avoid his initiation. You know, one silence could definitely set up for, for Newbie to bring down that Earth Spirit. We've but not mech. if he gets the jump like he has been. We've got Mech now finished up for XXS. Smoke Whoa. coming out from them. Smoke Both also sides. bottom from Newbie. They're going to be going for burning. This one should be easier to get if they can get the coil though. I mean, he's heading back. We'll see if any reaction comes in. I mean, Newbie not wanting to dive too deep. On to, on to this tier one burning, keeping himself hidden behind the tower. IG position around that mid tier one. See if anyone comes in from the side of Newbie to hold off as Opie starts to force the lane in. Both teams very patient. Looks like neither is going to bite. And so Opie now with the blade mail complete has an arcane rune in the bottom as well. Fall as well, so he'll feel very content with taking a fight if it comes to him. Kaka heads towards mid. Now, oh, Opie trying to find the chains, moves in with the blade mail, Kaka quickly with the burrow strike back, and now S triple, S triple C. TP's into mid, forces IG back. For now, Baboka though in the tree line, ready to roll in from the side, has the iron shell upon him. Newbie have to be careful how they defend this, especially with just the two members they have here at the moment. Yeah, and IG has a, the full mech, so that makes it a lot scarier for Newbie to fight into. Kaka, he's looking for it again with the Boros Strike out. Boboka tries for the grip. They will get the connection with the chains. Gus comes out onto two. Mugi holding them back. S Triple C straight up with the Sanities, but then the chain frost bouncing the vacuum of well. It's perfect. S Triple C's gone. The magnet touch from Boboka as he moves in onto the second core, trying to close the gap onto Mugi. Keeps it going. He's still got a couple more rocks to jump down. Border smash. He shoots. He scores. Boboka takes down Mugi on the back lines of it. Kaka tried to cover with the epicenter, but OP still with the blade mail and the flame guard up. Ready to close the gap onto the Sand King. Kaka Boros drives forward, but he can't create the distance that he needs to get out. His IG take three. Look right there, they look for the birds and they get them as well. A cheeky couple of hundred bonus for burning. This is starting to be a bit scary for Newbie with their Drow Ranger lineup. Ideally, you want to be having the advantage in the early game, but IG with that mech just being able to run at them with their heroes. Like we said, the gap closing is there for them and they're making it work. Burning starting to get involved in more and more kills. Three and one, even though being placed in a very unfortunate matchup bottom. SCCC tried to go for the uh, Sanity's Eclipse to oom them right at the start yes. so they wouldn't have the mana after that engagement, but they have sick charges, they have enough to be able to take the fight. We we'll see it here again. I mean, it almost looks like, you know, Mugen, SCCC focusing, have a chance, but the stick charges, SCCC taking down an Epiboka, just beautiful rock control. Mugi, he's pretty much as good as dead here as Baboka just chases him down. Baboka, as you can see on the camera, playing it cool, kicks out the rock. Easy pick off as he rips Mugi apart from each other. Five, four, and six on our spirit. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. Arms for the Absolutely day. creating Radiant's the chaos. That IG's lineup needs to do against this drow yeah. draft of, of Yubi. They claimed the first Radiant's tower in the game versus a drow lineup with like the panel set and like we were talking about. There's like little to no actual objective takers on the side Radiant's of IG. It just comes naturally through the brawl. You have to get kill, kills, kills, kills into towers, not just direct tower pushing. Newbie does claim one at the same time pretty much though. But. Waiting for familiars to be back online from Newbie before they want to try and take any fights. And then also, I think Kaka's Blink Dagger is really significant on top of KP because then they have the, the combo. That's pretty much how the strengths are. It's 
IG wants to be playing mostly around the Ember Spear and the Darkseer. With, of course, you know, Baboka making plays like a madman. And Newbie wants to be playing mostly around the pot. Q doing all right in levels as well. Level 10 still. Very poor, of course, on the Lich. Bottom of the net worth. But, uh, yeah, same levels at the moment on Q as there is on KP's puck. So, just goes to show. And some of IG supports are heavily benefiting off these last few fights. Yeah. And the panel said it too, it's like in these fights when IG is grouped up and just running at newbies, they have the ice armor too, so the damage is, the physical damage is Lane trying to fight, I mean Kaka takes a chain for us to the face, what's OP's the stick charge? Oh. OP, he's gonna get taken down, KP just jumps forward with the orb. They may even get more here, they're trying to go in the boat, rolls forward, silence, the stun on to two, the magnetize as well, S triple C, they're gonna back up with the vacuum, the wall's there, IG, they take one, they're almost certainly gonna get S triple C as well as he puts himself in the astral, but he's gone. Again, Boboka, even in these situations where maybe they, they kill OP, Boboka just rolls straight in up to the high ground, lands the combo, the backup's there from XXS. This Earth Spirit, they, I mean, Newbie just can't seem to do anything when Baboka's alive. He's landing perfect, perfect setups every single time, and it always seems like XXS is there to back him up too, with like a vacuum or with the Ion Shell as well, to enable it to become even better. Burning, getting closer and closer toward that Relic for the Radiance. So this was with the Precision Order that time from the Visage, but here we see the roll in, the kick during the roll, so he gets yeah. the perfect stun so and silence nice. follow-up. Perfectly executed. And there's just no way you as newbie get out. As you say, it's going to be down to BKBs, but that's still a, a while away for these these heroes. And as you say, on the OG, not necessarily the one you want to be building straight up, but this Triple C is almost certainly going to have to get it eventually. He's obviously going for the Dragon Lance, the, the Hurricane Pike first, which will help a little bit in terms of positioning, trying to avoid that combo. The big ones is definitely the, the double blinks, though. That's how they need to be able to take those fights. The Puck and the Sanking need to be in synergy together to get the follow-up counter initiation if Baboka does go for those plays. Because so far it's 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 really B the Baboka show a lot of the time so far in this game. 13 of the Absolutely. 14 kills. Veil now done on OP, so oh, it's gonna so add extra potential to Baboka's combo. KP spotting out OP. OP throws a defensive remnant though. A secondary defensive remnant. Not too much that KP can do on his own. I mean, you can try and have a play around. He does have the Dream Coil. We'll start feeding around at each other. IG, though. The rest of them going for the smoke. Wrap around towards the mid lane. Mugi in the neighborhood. We'll see how deep Baboka wants to go. Mugi already actually backing up to the high ground. Looks like he's aware that something's happening here. A lot of members off the map. The scan, scan catches. Yeah, hits as well. And their suspicions are confirmed. Now he has full Shadow Blade picked up, so if they don't have reveal, but they do. Baboka already has dust, so he's prepared for that before he was finished up but he'll be able to get himself into some positioning for the Shadow Blade in some of those situations. And maybe he can even just go for the ganks. Maybe that's what he wants to try to be. Go for the ganks with the puck and the sanking on that Ember Spirit. Understandable as well from S Triple C. Actually, after getting the full staff, he, he takes the Hurricane Pike out of the quick buy. Straight for the Straight BKB. Straight for the BKB. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's needed for them to kind of like chew their way back into this game. Link sanking, BKB OD, and BKB draw ranger. Burning about 600 away from that full radiance. Something else to throw into the chaos of these fights that these these heroes on Nubia are certainly going to struggle to deal with. KP's just been cutting the bottom wave for, I think it's been like a minute and a half now or something. He just keeps clearing that one out instantly. I see how these blinks come into play. They've got it on Kaka. We're waiting for the big reveal of him on the Sand King. Epicenter at the ready, of course. What sort of setup can they get? They don't have question. They didn't go for like pipe early or anything. He went for the guarding groups, of course. We'll probably see him. We could see him go for pipe after. It's the sanking and the puck are always pretty threatening. But newbie look like they're trying to make an aggressive play here with those blink daggers finished up. As we were talking about, that's their that's their one of their timing windows before the BKBs come out. They've got to be so clean with this, or at least catch the Earth Spirit on the back. If they don't get Baboka in the start of this and he's in the neighborhood, he is definitely going to be able to turn things around. They see Mugi farming with their aggressive ward right now. Maybe IG is going to be able to sneak in and get Mugi during this while his team is also smoking. Mm. Let's see who matches up who. Who's going to get the high ground advantage? Newbie Quickly, right Newbie. now has it. They're coming around on the back. IG up by the shrine of Newbie. They have the high ground advantage here as they sort of take over Newbie's half of the map. I, a, a Newbie. Birding has no TP to get into this fight too if it does happen. Well, that's the, both birds oh. going immediately. That's 
the Familiars down. He does have the resummon available. Both teams looking to fight, but neither able to find it. And IG straight back to pushing down this mid lane here. It's triple C, the club still. A while away from that BKB. Roll forward from Baboka, seeing if you can catch that OD. OP very close to having the boost of travel, so he'll be able to maintain a bit of better control of these side lanes, which for the time being, newbie, they are focusing and now starting to group up as a drow liner. They push down bottom, they take the tier two tower. With the familiars moving forward, we'll see if they want to try and pressure onto the tier three. The creeps are already up there. They're keeping KP and Kaka down at the moment now. Precision or a catapult. Look at how much damage they get on that tier three bottom in a couple hits. Over 60 damage per hit. Now the precision aura does wake up, uh, wear off. Yeah, response there from Burning Earth, looking to clean it up. It's going to mean that he's not around for this fight, and IG, they are still certainly looking for action inside Newbie's jungle. But Newbie doing a very good job at avoiding IG at this stage. Very deep, aggressive words coming out from IG. They're looking to just take fights, take engagements. And you can see that bottom, that Kakra and KP maybe even thinking about going in on Burning. They, they've got the Epicenter and the Dream Coil. They've got the birds as well on the side, too. At the moment, just staying hidden in the trees. Burning knows something's up. He doesn't. They have very good wards right now on the side of, the, of IG. So when he doesn't see anybody under those wards, doesn't see the drow farming, doesn't see OD farming. All that's showing is a visage on the map. There's something going on. But now he's starting to step up. Kaka, channel. He's going the for it. The Epi's going coming out. Burning. He's going to try and close the gap. We'll get the Boros strike. In come the Familiars in KP. It's but far. It's not enough. And now mass TP reactions come in. The rupture's down to Kaka. He'll try for the TP out. But the Chain Frost mini stun is there. And KP That's in the back. And indeed, OP straight in on the back lines with the chains. They'll clean up one of the birds as well. And just trying to force the issue a little bit too much there from Newbie. They've got to stay patient. As IG, as we've seen time and time and again, they can respond to these sort of plays. I mean, even if they made the full connection, it could be questionable if the damage would be quite there. I mean, this is Blood Seeker 1700 HP has that radiance as well. They would have had to get it pretty much like much further away from the base and have to get both of them on top of them right away for all the damage. Because Blood Seeker has been, you know, quiet. This game is not really too active after the laning phase, after those kills. He's just been farming away. It's level 16, and Bloodseeker is one of those heroes, one of the Agis with very high strength gain, 2.7 per level, and that level 10 talent of the 225 HP, so he does get very durable. And it just seems a bit of a bit of a turnaround in terms of what we saw in game one. You know, game one, newbie very much having a draft that benefited from this sort of slowdown, yeah. slow in pace, and, and this time around, IG, they're the ones that are going to come out at top with the Iron Shell, with the Ember, the Bloodseeker. They're going to be farming a lot quicker than that of newbie. As newbie with this drow lineup, they they were looking to take, as you say, objectives. And what we're 20, coming to 24 minutes in, they've only taken the tier one and the tier two down bottom. There's still two tier one towers that this drow li lineup has uh, failed to push down and take. Yeah, and the, and the perfection that you want as a drow lineup is you take, get the early tier ones, and then you yep. can make your way into Roche as a five man unit. And you get that Aegis, and then, yeah, that death ball kind of happens. IG's not allowing it, they're keeping this pressure going. And this time around, it's, you know, we mentioned KP in the last game so much about how crazy of an impact he had. He's not going, he doesn't have Midas this time around. He needs to have the Yule Scepter from all the, you know, the chains from the Ember Spirit and the amount of silences they have from the Bloodseeker and Earth Spirit. He needs more survivability. Top scan and actually catches Boga. Boogie. Yeah, he finds it straight away. The Yule's catch is there. That scan into Baboka heading straight into the tree line, resulting in a free kill onto Moogie. And some drum rolls. Very nicely done there by the Boca. I mean, it's always hard to tell who made the call to, to make that scan happen. We'll give him the credit. We'll give him the credit. He deserves it anyway. Yeah, he's been, he's been absolutely a monster this game. Success. Kaka's around. Kaka quick with the blink away. And interesting as well, actually, as we're seeing the darks here. This game X success. He's, he's looking to go straight for the, the Halberd after the blink, knowing that if they can stay ahead like this, if they can disarm some of these big heroes, and talk about big heroes, but Boca mid lane, he's just playing around with S-Triple-C. He'll go for the TP out. Will he make it? No. The vacuum's there. Rupture's out as well. Turn around, drop the Sanity. He's looking to try and find the Earth Spirit. KP with the Dream Core, bring it to Boca down there. But Boca surprises and fives. S-Triple-C just finishes it off, but he pays with his own life. Again, Boca doing everything, even when he goes down, setting up for glory for his team. KP will jump away. Does get the blink off. But it's another fight, another trade, favoring that of IG, getting this S Triple C down on the OD once again. Yeah, he'll be still on recovery, complete recovery mode. They need that BKB to be able to take the fights versus IG. 
They're getting closer and closer on both heroes though, about 1500 away from Moogie and also 400 gold away on OD. Once they've got both of those two, they can start taking the fights versus this mass magic damage lineup, but there still is the factor that Burning has just been absolutely free farming during all of this, getting a couple kills here and there too to accelerate him forward. I mean, when he gets a BKB too, he can just kind of run, run into them, unless he wants to go, it looks like an SNY, I believe, just to have that movement speed. More scale and potential. Doesn't really feel like he needs the BKB just yet because they're the ones making the aggressive moves. Newbie have to be incredibly careful how they come out in the lanes. I mean, you're seeing mid lane Kaka trying to farm it up. So many gap closes on a, so many gap closes on IG. And they're even itemizing even more so. Blink dagger on the darts here like we saw before. Before OP picks up a blink dagger on the Ember too. So just trying to get into those back lines on top of the Drow Ranger. I'll take your trip. Moka eyeing up Kaka. Kaka does have Moogie relatively close. We'll see if Moogie comes across. Looks like Moogie's already out of there. He says, sorry, mate. There's no saving you. He'll try for the TP out. The Familiar Stunts are going to give him some... Oh, he gets it. Oh, he dies in the base. The damage is too much indeed from the Magnetize. Pavoka gets it. The resummon will be there as well, just to make sure that they can't farm up the Familiars. Gust a little too late on OP as he's quick with the Remnant out. The tower down as well. Moogie will get the deny. As Victus Gaming maintain their lead. As you say, things certainly can change with the BKBs come out, and we must not write off the fact that newbie, if they do win a team fight, this lineup is going to take Roshan. It's going to take towers. Yeah. They pick up a gem too. They're feeling the pressure. That's that's for certain. Gem now finished up on Faith, so they want to be able to take out those wards. Because they're playing just completely reactionary, they're playing very defensive as they need to be until those that magic community starts coming out on their big heroes. And now as well we see consistently using the familiars to just get the vision that they require, trying to position them in between both sides to make it increasingly harder for IG to find that jump that they've been getting away with so many times this game so far. KP, let's be careful, Baboka's on the hunt. KP's already out though. So IG picks up their own gem too to take out the small vision that Newbie has. They feel like Newbie's evading a little bit too many of their movements. But all in the meanwhile, like we said, burning. Just farming. Full S and Y finished. BKB's queued up. Already level 19. It gets very scary once Bloodseeker starts to get those, those high levels. That level 25 is no joke. If he wants to go for the Blood Ray cooldown, it can be very strong. Even the Lifesteal, though, in this one could prove to be incredibly good for the man fight, if, or for like him just getting in the face of the Drow and just standing toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Smoke now coming out. They've got everything. <laughs> Their whole arsenal is prepared. Newbie though, one BKB finished, two BKBs finished, and they've got a pipe as well on that's, Faith. That's, that's really that's, nice. That could be go time for them as well. This one's going to be about high ground and who gets the big initiation. I mean, if they can allow it, you know, S-Triple-C on this OD, you can get a lot done in these fights. Okay. Yeah. If he starts to rack up that, that in and drop the sanity, so a lot of heroes are susceptible, especially the cores on IG's lineup. As long as they can get the good lockdown for him to do so. They need the Puck and the Sand King to be alive and get a couple heroes inside of the Coil and the Burrow for them to stack up that hint on the OD and for the Drow Ranger to start getting those hits off. But now it's actually IG making their way into the pit. They do have Blood Rage that they can throw onto the Roche after they break the Lincolns. You know that it's going on with the Familiars, of course. The first stun will start to slow IG down and IGR actually put off immediately by the fact that they know that Newbie is aware of what's going on. Newbie are heading over under the cover of smoke. That's probably the hardest place for IG to fight inside the Roche pit, just because of the sheer AoE ultimates that Newbie does have in comparison. Still playing around them. They're yeah, trying to make familiar stuns. play on these familiars, it looks like. IG is aware, though. Newbie on the low ground. They themselves actually sneaking into Roshan. As XXS leading forward, Moogie with the Shadow Blade. This time they'll get the familiars though. Got a resummon. As you say, very unlikely that they'll go back into the pit. Once this they know that newbie's on the prowl. This time Faith's spending a lot of, you know, as expected, he's playing the Visage, so he's being the more of the farmer. While well, last time it was, of course, Kaka on the Night Stalker. This is a Drow Visage lineup. He wants to be the one prioritizing that farm. Sanking only really needs like Blink and Yule or Four Staff slash BKB to do his damage. Things certainly 
continuing to slow down again, this sort of similar point at game one. Oh. Burning absolutely leading the charge at a thousand gold. BKB will be complete for him. Yeah, both teams just trying to shove each other's lanes into each other and take a better fight, but they're both smoking pretty much at the same times and kind of avoiding each other in those situations. Yeah. The 5v5 fight is still very threatening from Newbie. That's the thing is, you know, there's a it's only a 4k lead for IG. That can get completely that can get completely changed into one small gauge. So Burning almost got the BKB now finished up. That could be where they try to make a fight around. That magic community would be super useful versus the Puck and Sanking. Definitely once that Solar Crest is there on Faith. Oh, Newbie, if they can get uh, a look at onto Roshan, they'll be able to take it down incredibly quick. Well, actually mid lane KP there, jaunting forward to the Illusory Orb, gets punished immediately with a Boulder Smash and the drag back from the vacuum. Accessing if you can find more. Roll from Boboka, jump forward as well from OP Kaka. Holds back the Darks here for some time with the Burrow Strike, but now he himself in trouble, stunned up by the Boulder Smash. Newbie, they're gonna lose two here. Two down, both without buyback. IG to look towards Roche, and that indeed does seem to be the plan. Straight into the pit, burning goes. No buybacks, yeah, there's just free Roche for them this time. That was why KP just jaunted forward, huh? Yeah. Just wanted to clear the quick wave out, didn't expect them to be there, I guess. So. Instant punish from IG. Not letting anything slip past them this game. Yep. No medallion, but like we said, the blood rage on the Roche makes it in incredibly fast for them to bring it down. And with the frost armor, of course, on themselves, relatively safe. Yeah. And we have it, so he just into the hands of Burning. Newbie still very much on the back foot this game. 22 to 11 as IG hold this lead. Trying to push this series to that game three. Boboka very close to having the blink. We've already seen how much he can do without it. Only imagine what he gets done with it. Newbie at this point just sticking together as five. They can't afford to get caught out as they have been. Yeah, they're really one. expecting IG to make all these first moves. Especially now with that Aegis, they don't want to make an aggressive one themselves. There's the blink. Complete now for Baboka. Of course, the, the real test is going to be when IG come to, to pushing up to the high ground. Obviously in comparison and in contrast to Newbie's lineup, they themselves not not the best lineup for taking down towers. Even though I say that, and they've, they've done a lot more than this Drow strat in terms of removing towers from the map. Yeah, they've been having a lot more of the like the map control because of that, so it's letting them farm just a bit more, and that's why they're pulling further and further ahead. So those two tier ones still being up on the side of IG. Newbie's, yeah, Newbie's map is much smaller. Now the smoke play. No wards from Newbie over on IG's half of the map there, so Newbie will not be too aware of this. Full Halberd and a plate mail finished on XXX. That could be the one to get jumped on in indeed immediately, but Boca sees him straight away going in with a combo. No mercy. Absolutely none whatsoever. Yeah, and we'll see how much they can get done with this window. As we said, IG's lineup not under too much pressure at all to, to go for any incredibly rash plays, but I'm uh, gonna move down the mid anyway, see if they can force anything out from Newbie. Rob John S triple C already, keeping him at bay. Burning starting to hit into the tier three, jump forward, there's the vacuum, there's the combo. combo as well with the chain frost. Oh my goodness, SCCC and Faith wiped out of the game immediately. No buyback on S triple C either. There'll be a buyback from Faith. Moogie pops the shadow blade to dodge the slight change combo. But IG taking SCCC down for a full minute will get away with at least the melee ranks in this middle lane. They'll stick around for the ranged as well. And as we saw there, you cannot allow IG to jump on you like that. The combo, the execution is exactly at the level that IG have been required to bring out against Newbie this game. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, but Boca having a almost flawless game, to be honest. 18, or eight, or eight and 14, so 22 of the 25 kills with him and XXS as well. You just take a look at their scores, like 4 0 and 15 on the darks here involved in the majority as well. They're just having great teamwork coming out from these guys. Warm racks down. Newbie's feeling very pressured. I think they have to almost smoke up and take a fight with their BKBs because they've had what them for quite something? a while now. They have to do something with them. <laughs> IG's just splitting them up and then getting the jump on them every single time. They have to change the pace. Up to 3k gold on Moogie. 
He may want to try and get his hands on his next big item, but as you say, the more that they postpone it, the harder it's going to get. And indeed, straight up, the call's being made as the team. Still a minute and a half on the Aegis, too. That's the problem. This could be very tough for Nubi to take I mean, the fight first. Look at Boboka's positioning already. Up there on the cliff. No way that they could come around here. IG starting to take control of Nubi's half of the map. Nubi's only real safe place being this, this one more that they have out and their own high ground. IG ready to take the next tier two. Open up the potential for getting the Mega Creeps. Taking down some more lane of barracks. Getting as much as they can out of that Aegis. And Nubi unable to find opportunities with that smoke. They just split up and all try to farm. But now IG's gonna threaten that high ground. Force reactions back. Nubi's on position here. They may try to go right away. That's one of the things we do like to see when teams are a bit behind. They try to make a jump right away, but maybe waiting for that Aegis. And there's the Familiar's gone just like that. And Faith still 25 seconds for the resummon. Aegis has 30 seconds, 27 seconds left on it. Yeah, the jump forward from Kaka. Pyro's tried to lead in. OP tries for the change combo. Doesn't find the connection. Silence onto Burning, but he'll be surged out of there. They forced everyone back. Time to reset, farm up. Aegis is going to be taking out, and they're... They're perfectly fine with this 13k lead. The map is closing more and more for Nubi. Absolutely not a position you would want to be in at all as a Drow lineup. Yeah, and you look at the, I mean, even looking at that experience, you just look at their, their levels. It's like 13 on Sand King, 15 on Vistas, 17 on Puck, and then all the rest of IG's heroes start to come in. And like they were showing on the on the graph as well, the observers, they, they showed the it's been rarely any opportunities for Nubi to get any kills. It's been one kill in the last 20 minutes. In the, yeah, actually in the last 20 minutes. Just one, two towers and one kill. What can they do? I mean, they're trying to close in on that MKB for Moogie. 1500 away from having it complete. But his damage is already super minimal. That frost arm, the ice armor from the Lich has been putting in work throughout the, the slow amount of team fights that they've been able to take. And XSS building up a Shiva's too. A Halberd, he's got 41 armor on him. Very hard for newbie to take those engagements. And of course, the way that this uh, this Drow's had to build has mean meant yeah. that the, the overall effect of the Drow is very minimal. No agi items really at all you know, on his big ones, at least. Shadow Blade, BKB, MKB, not doing much at all. I mean, still, it's, yeah. a, it's a 60 plus damage. It's a good, it's a good passive. It's a good aura, but uh, definitely not at the full potential that. The newbies lineup may have hoped to because of the items that this drow's been forced into. Yeah, not never, not the ideal drow scenario at all. Like we said, the tier ones ideally want to be dropped early on and going for that roach so they can group up. IG has the high ground here. They do get a ward placed though by newbie. Yeah, I'm gonna spot out XXS. Crazy trait with the jump in Boris Strike right, trying to go burning. Pops the BKB. There's the blood right in the back. But both goes forward. They're moving in on test triple C. Pops the BKB trying to get out. But burning going forward does get stunned. Held back for the time being. But S triple C so down low and he's out of it. Down for 70 seconds. Faith moved in upon as well as burning. Picks up the double kill. Kaka does get the end of but he's dragged back into the combo. Triple kill for burning. As newbie are crumbling here. GG is called. It's all too much for this trail lineup. As IG turn up with a perfect in-your-face lineup, and it absolutely gets the job done. And there's no doubt about it, full hats off to Baboka. This man, Amazing. this Earth Spirit on the main stage here at TI blew everyone away. Little to no mistakes coming out from him, punishing every single lane. Goes top, he sees as soon as the Visage rotates, kills top. They move away from mid, they go kill mid again. Move away from bottom, kills bottom. He literally killed all three lanes within, within the span of four minutes in multiple situations. And then in in between the low period, he was still finding pickoffs everywhere. Just that hats off to the book. That was an incredible performance. I, really, I think you look at that, and I think if you're any sort of team that tries a drown strap against this, you can't let Baboka have the Earth Spirit. It, it just pulls it apart entirely. Immaculate play from, from IG all round. I mean, we're, we're going to this game three round the corner. I mean, how are we going to expect to look towards this? Is Newbie going to say, we cannot deal with the Baboka Earth Spirit, take that out? I mean, it's so hard, surely, drafting between these two sides. They're going to have to make some games. adjustments, for sure. This was a very well-rounded kind of draft from IG, just like lacking a little bit of building damage, but they're brawling. The way that they used the Dark Seer, the Earth Spirit, and then the other two enabled with the Ion Shell was just perfect. Maybe showing the Drow Ranger was a little bit of a mistake by Newbie. You know, the third pick Drow was allowed 
IG to set up how to that. punish it. So yeah. maybe they'll look at, like PPD was saying on the panel, choosing those cores a little bit later on. And Burning Blood Secret, of course. He had, you know, the freest game of his life. Yeah, Even though, apart from the start, you know, we saw he did get pressured. Yeah. But the recovery game was incredibly strong for him. Getting a good timing on the Radiance. Yes, and why BKB, and suddenly, as we saw, Newbie could do nothing to stop the momentum that IG had going for them. But there we have it. As it stands, the series tied 1-1. One, one. We'll pass back to the analysts. Day 9, what do you guys think? That was awesome. Often there's a strategy where it's not what can they do, but what do they have to do? And Invictus Gaming really needed to get strong pickoffs, good gold gain early, and it was so cool to see how aggressive they were. It took them a little while to begin stepping into action, though, and I was worried that Newbie was just going to be able to calmly farm safely. I just don't really like the draw pick into this uh, Lich and Earth Spirit early on. I think they might, have, uh, uh, they might as well just have first pick draw because they pick her into two heroes that they showed that, her, that like she's bad against. Like Lich gives armor, as we spoke about before. The Earth Spirit can get into the draw ranger. So it's, I don't know, I think Newbie is probably the better team, but they just have to pick something that's... It seemed like IG was going to pick those heroes regardless. Yeah. But then Newbie said, okay, we'll pick Drow into that. And IG was like, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm playing the Draw Ranger into both the Lich and the Darkseer. And then on top of that, Ember. It's like a... And a Bloodseeker I don't know. Well. What do you do as this Draw Ranger? You, you're like in this position where you can't run because they're going to chase you down because you're slow. But you also can't fight because they have armor and shells. So, I don't know. It's, what tough, it's a tough, tough... Yeah, one of the most interesting moments in that draft was the third pick, the Bloodseeker. Uh, if you recall, almost the entire reserve time was used then. They were down to about 20, 25 seconds. They went straight from two minutes all the way down. And then the last few picks had to happen very, very quickly. So it really felt like that was the big deciding moment where they shifted everything far more towards yeah, this gank heavy style. I mean, I think Newbie kind of showed what they wanted to do with that draw pick. So IG took their time to try to figure out how they wanted to counter it. And Bloodseeker was probably then like one of the picks that they prepared for uh, or prepared to pick. And uh, he also went the Radiance build, which yeah. is going to make his opponents miss when they're affected by that aura, uh, which yeah. is great against Drow because the majority of the jam damage from the Drow lineup is coming from those right clicks. That is a great point. And now we actually are tied one and one with these two powerhouse teams in winner's bracket. They're both guaranteed top six right now, and whoever wins will be advancing on to the winner's bracket final where they will be guaranteed top three. So this winds up being a very important match for their runs through this tournament. As we've already seen, there's teams that lost in the winner's bracket and were promptly and swiftly eliminated in the lowers because there is fierce competition pretty much everywhere. And I want to ask a little bit about in terms of the drafting strategy that we saw out of uh, Newbie in that game, after they third picked Drow, was there any alternative set of picks that you think they could have chosen in order to bolster this Drow focus? Or should they have? Uh, it seems a little weird to abandon it. Personally, I didn't really like the Odie pick that much, the last one. I think uh, they needed to pick something that was a little bit faster. Like I think uh, when they had a matchup of Puck against uh, Ember mid with the sanking of like backing him up, I thought that was pretty okay, and then get some kind of offlane hero that's kind of fast. I don't know, Weaver's not the best against Ember. It can work with the Draw Aura, of course, but just, just something that's a little bit faster so that they can kind of snowball the lanes, make sure that this Ember doesn't come online because it is a hero that's fairly weak in lane, and if he doesn't get off to a somewhat decent start, he can be kind of it's slowed really down too much so yeah. he can't get effective. It's tough. Draw lineups are really built around physical damage, and it's hard to switch off of that. I think maybe... Maybe picking some here that offer them a little bit more magical damage to avoid having to deal with the Lich Armor all the time. And been they the also picked like the Visage, and he's not good against Darkseer in the lane. We can so like see that they got kind of bullied out the draw and Visage against a solo Darkseer. So it's a very like weak lane. So they could probably have uh, picked another hero, as uh, Pika said, for that role as well, and not only the OD pick. Because, Peter, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned that Darkseer is not as active of a hero in lane. Uh, it's a little difficult to bully as strongly. Do you like Darkseer pick in this specific position? And if so, why? Um, I think it worked well with Baboka playing fantastic on the Earth Spirit. You know, Fog was raging about him, and for, for good reason. He was everywhere. You know, those Ion Shells help him, you know, kind of bridge the gap of having enough damage to kill a hero or not. I'm I'm not a huge fan of Darkseer, and I get how it, you know it's nice against Draw Ranger because you can surge and you know avoid that frost arrow slow. 
Um, but they just overall, they, play, they played really well. They, they played really patient, which is what I like. They, they knew they didn't have great building damage. They knew they couldn't force high ground, so they just planted good wards, um, kept control of the map, and whenever Newbie left their base, they were ready to jump on them. And I am curious about the fact that they were so patient. I don't know if this is just my inexperience as a player speaking, but it seems like as early as possible versus that sort of lineup, you want to begin getting kills, begin gaining momentum, because if you're too passive, Newbie's going to slowly run away in the late game. Is that just an incorrect analysis, or was it just that they had right timing when they kicked into gear? I think they just had the right timing. You can't really do it uh, too early as well. I think you need to get your core items and uh, just play from that. And I think the the level seven on both Darkseer and kind of Ember. That's I think that's kind of your cue usually. It can also be when Darkseer gets a mech, but just getting that level four angel, getting it on Ember or getting it on Earth Spirit. It just makes you so strong. You go in and you have, with the Ember, he has like 200 damage per second on these two combined. And same with the Earth Spirit, he can just get on top of you and he deals a lot of damage all of a sudden. KPI, so I think on, the, KPI on the puck had like a really different game than that first one. Right. Dealing with Ember Spirit and Snare, Earth Spirit, Boboka was all over him with the silences. Yeah. He, uh, you know, he was dying quite yeah. a lot. And then Bloodseeker, like they, Boboka and Burning were chaining their silences incredibly well. Yeah, it's tough. It's, it's, it's a much tougher yeah. puck game this time around, I think. Yeah. It was also really impressive to see how often Kaka has been able to escape uh, in other matches. And then in this particular one, he was chain silenced and shut out relatively easily. And at this point with Invictus Gaming and Newbie one and one, both teams are going to recoup in the booths and return back out to the main stage. And while they're doing so, let's take another look at some of the TI7 short film finalists.